We're working on a 2015 Subaru Forester. We got a bad stud here, so the lug nut is on there cross studded. It's gonna twist off. It's gonna twist off, which I knew it was. That's what happened when a stud, when you put a lug nut on there, you force it on there and then later you go take it off, it don't come off. You have to break it off. One of the uh, lug nuts wouldn't come off. So what happened, somebody put it on there, cross studded, and they drove it on there. They forced it on there, which was fine. But when you go to take the wheel off later, the stud, it, it won't come off. The lug nut won't come off, so I have to break, actually keep turning it until I twist the stud off, which I did. And now I'm gonna show you how to replace a stud if this happens to you. It's not real hard to do. Uh, you can do it at home. You don't have the car have the car jacked up this side. Just jack it up with a floor jack and block it up. Make sure it's blocked up good. And this is the procedure that you do to take it off. First of all, we gotta take the uh, caliper off. The caliper's gotta come off, and this rotor's gotta come off. So that's the biggest part of the whole job. Getting the stud out ain't gonna be bad. You gotta take the caliper and the caliper bracket off. You gotta be able to have your steering wheel unlocked so you can turn the wheel. And it's a 14 millimeter that takes the caliper bolts off right here. Let me get this light. So these are the caliper bolts, you take these off. those off and you take the caliper pull it off carefully lay it over one side it won't hurt it to hang it's no problem there's no pressure on it and then we're gonna need to take this bracket off because you got to get the rotor off so this bracket here takes a 17 back here 17 socket and I had one earlier let me see if I got it now and they're on there pretty tight So you're taking this off. Break them loose. Once you break it loose, if you, if you have a If you have electric ratchet, it makes it nice. If not, you can do it by hand. And you can leave the pads on there. You don't really gotta take the pads off. If you don't know what you're doing, you will have a hard time getting these pads back on there. So you can leave the pads on there and then you just grab a hold of it so it doesn't fall. And you can kind of leave the bolts in there. They, you don't have to pull them all the way out. Just, just enough where they, you can just leave them in there like that. Leave the bolts in there. And then this here, this comes off like that. And then you put it back on the same way. You lay it down gently where the pads don't fall out. And then you put it back on the same way. And then your rotor, you take the rotor off, it just slides off. Sometimes these rotors are rusted around here and they're hard to get off. There's a, there's a 12 millimeter bolt that goes on. You, you screw it into there. As you screw it in, as it goes in, it'll, it'll pull the rotor off if the rotor's stuck. Because if you start beating on it, you're going to mess up the rotor. So you run some bolts in right in the middle of the, these holes right here, uh, 12 millimeter. And as you run them in there, it'll, it'll pull this, it'll pull it out slowly like that. It'll pull it off. It'll get it where it's not stuck. That happens a lot. Okay, now we're now down to the stud. 
take your hammer, just have your nice size hammer, and just knock it out. That's it. Now to put this back in, you can't use this to pull it in. You need to have a, a the old lug nuts where they don't have a cap or nothing on them. They're just a straight lug nut like that. And I'll show you why you need that. Because this here, it has a cap on it. And when you pull that stud in, you need something. When you put the stud in there, I'll, I'll, I'll wrench it on there and I'll pull the stud in with the lug nut. That's how you get it in there. Stick it in like this. Hopefully. Sometimes you gotta, there's, there's a metal plate right here you gotta knock back. Just enough where you can get the stud in. The other one came out because it was already broken, it was short. This is a full length, so it's hitting on this piece of metal. So I knocked that back a little bit just so that I can clear and get the stud in. Once the stud's in like that, then you take your nut and you want to pull it in. You get it straight as you can, get it straight, get the nut like that, and you'll probably be using a wrench. You can use a wrench. It's a, it's a 19, and you, you, pull, you gotta pull the stud. You'll see the back of it here, on the back. The stud's gotta be flat all the way up against the, uh, the bearing housing, on the, on the wheel bearing housing here. It's gotta be pulled all the way in. So, I got an air ratchet, so I'll pull it in. But like I said, you can use a wrench, a, a ratchet or a wrench, but you're gonna have to hold this so it doesn't turn on you. It's not turning because I'm using an air gun. And you'll see it back here, you can see the split back here, it's getting closer. It's pulling really hard, and I don't want to put too much pressure because I could twist the nut off, so I'm going to hit it a little bit to kind of help it loosen up so it'll go on in there. Because if you keep forcing it like I was doing right there, it'll do the same thing this, with a when it's cross-threaded, you'll twist the nut off and you'll let it start over. So I'm making sure that the back of this lug nut the head of it is flat against this. It's got to be flat. Can be no gap. Or later it'll loosen up on you. So you got to make sure that's all the way pulled up there, flat against your flange, your wheel bearing. And that's it. That did it. We'll make sure that everything's good. Goes on good. Make sure none of the threads got messed up. And that's all there is to it. Now, to put it back together. What the other nut that fall out? <clears throat> the first thing you gotta put on is the rotor. First thing. Put your rotor back on. Now what I do, because it makes it a lot easier, because the rotor just kind of plops there. So what you do is you take with that stud, with that nut. Put that on there, and that'll keep them flopping around on you. It keeps it straight. Actually, the other one, oh, what happened to the other one? Here it is. This here with a hole all the way through, it goes up against it better if you have, if you got a, a uh, lug nut that'll go all the way up there. You wanna hold the rotor nice and straight. So when you put your pads on, the pads don't get, uh, Turn, turn sideways on you and get all jammed up in there. This is the K2 
caliper bracket. Holds the pads and holds the caliper on. Take that, carefully slide it back over just like, just like a saddle. Set it back over. Turn around where you can see it. And you get up in here. And you start your one nut. You pull it up here. And you kind of move this up and down so you can find, if you push in on the bolt, hold a little pressure in on the bolt, and then kind of move this a little bit that way or that way, you'll feel it when the bolt drops into the hole, and then you'll know that it's in there. It makes it a lot easier. You can see I've done this a few times. Tighten these up. I'm running up in here with a ratchet, but this doesn't get as tight as it should be, so I'm going to use a uh, hand ratchet. Because you want those tight. So you want to pull up on it tight. That should be enough. You don't have to worry about breaking them off because they're real, they're real heavy duty bolts. They're not, you're not gonna break them off. Okay, now you're ready for the caliper. Keep these here, they haven't moved. If they come out, you, you just have to work them back in there. They, they're slots where the pads fit back on there. But if you can keep them on there, then you have no problem with it. This goes back on there. These here are floating. So you have to make sure when you put this on, you let these hit the back of the pad first, and then you get this part here over. You get, you get it saddled on there. Once that's saddled on, you have to push in on these little pins right here so they'll clear. Sometimes the pins are out. And then you just got it close like that. Make sure it's lined up. Then you got the 14 millimeter. Holds the caliper on. That. And you make sure these are tight. These pins, they're round, but then they're flat on one side or the other because they go up in here and they hold the, they uh, hold yourself from turning while you're turning this, it holds it, it holds the pin. So you gotta make sure those flat spots go up in there, back in there, the flat spots into, into the caliper. If you don't, you'll get a false tightening. You'll tighten it and it'll come loose later. So that's very important. These don't have to be that tight because you can twist these off. Just get them real snug. Don't, don't put a lot of pressure on them because they will twist right off on you. And then you gotta replace, replace the pins if that happens. Um, that's it. We just put a new stud on. You see now we knocked it out, take the caliper off, take the bracket off, put it over to one side, pull the rotor, knock the stud out, put the stud back in there, pull it through with, a, with, a, with another lug nut, pull it all through and, and like I said, get behind it and help tap it in and as you, as you pull it in, you need to hit on the back of it. That's very easy to do. You, you have plenty of access to do that. Okay, that's it.
Hope you enjoy that. Hope uh, that helps you. Like I said, you can do it on the ground, no problem. Please subscribe to our video uh, and tell others if they need to get this done. It's not that hard.